Matt, we are back with yet another Al TV. And usually when we do these Al TVs, it's a YouTube video that I'm able to find. Sometimes a daily motion video, and they're kind of chopped to shit, right? It's like this three hour television experience is like reduced to like 35 minutes. And a lot of people will write to us saying, oh, you're missing a lot of the jokes. Well, we found on archive.com that this particular episode was just basically unedited. Upload it like every video, every commercial break. It's just two hours of MTV from this year. And for people who said we were missing the jokes, you were right. You were right. <laughs> You're going to come right, right out I the also... gate and say there was a lot here that I was so grateful to have in this episode. <laughs> but I also think that I realized, oh, he does a lot of like replaying old bits to fill out these two hours. Well, there's a lot there of a lot. There's a lot of replay of old bits, probably the most recycled material that we've seen so far, especially mm-hmm. when you factor in that one Canadian edition. That yeah, he the did, much music. Which he, we, he definitely yeah. we had. I think when we even talked about that one, we had the sneak the suspicion that that might happen. But yeah. the fact that this is so bulked out with everything, including the music videos, the like, I actually feel like, despite it being rehashed material, it was one of the most satisfying Al TVs I've watched so far. Yeah, and this was a bulked out episode of Al TV, so we decided to bring in our most bulked out guest we, that we, we can it think out. of, uh, my good buddy Nate Lopez from the Ninety One Donkey Lane podcast. Nate. Welcome finally Hello. to Weird Algorithm. Hello, yes. Thank you for having me on. I'm I'm so excited to do this. So I have to ask, what is your experience with Al TVs first? And then we'll dive into Weird mm-hmm. Al in general. But was this your first mm-hmm. ever experience watching an Al TV or did you try to catch it when it aired on MTV? Oh yeah. I was 13 at the time. So I was this was prime Weird Al for me. Um, he had just released or was releasing the off the deep end album. Mm -hmm. That was like the first time that his, uh, parodies had directly affected my pop culture. I was a huge Nirvana fan and it was one of those times where I loved Nirvana. I loved weird Al and I wasn't sure if I was supposed to be upset that he was making fun of Nirvana. (laughs) Yeah. Right. So I was, this was prime me. I, I remember specifically a couple of these bits uh, from when I was 13, because this was kind of a big deal between me and my friends. You know, Al TV would come on and we would try to record it off the TV and we would talk about it. This was, I mean, I was in Boy Scouts at the time and Al, Weird Al Yankovic was easily a top five uh, topic of discussion on every single Boy Scout meeting, every single camp, camping trip. He was, this was prime me. So I was, I was, I was right here for this. So I remember watching him. Not sure if it was this episode, but I do remember watching Al TV. All right. And I I mean, the most logical follow-up question is also, do you remember the first time you discovered Weird Al existed at all? Yeah. Uh, again, Boy Scouts. This was, I guess I was like 11. I was a really young scout. And it seemed, it's funny to say this, but it seemed subversive at the mm-hmm. time. Because we were totally. listening to, yeah, we were listening to uh, Christmas at Ground Zero. And ah. <laughs> just the idea that you could make fun of something like Santa Claus that hard, it just it, it blew my mind. It was so good. I went home and I immediately devoured every single bit of Weird Al I could get. I bought all his albums. I used to shovel sidewalks and I'd get an allowance from my parents. All of that money went to Weird Al for a good solid 18 months. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Okay. Perfect. I will say so, in the world of Weird Al's subversive parodies, a Christmas of Ground Zero is it definitely qualifies. Yeah. Right? That, that is still a bold and upsetting thing to hear. <laughs> many, <laughs> many decades later. It's it's crazy. Yeah. We establish real quick what year it is when you hit play on this this archive yes. video because we just get Pearl Jam Alive. That's the yeah. last video that plays on MTV before Al TV kicks off. Yes. And we're like, all right, this is where we are. Um, instead of the normal, you know, normally the Al TVs would start off with him making fun of the first episode of MTV and he would do like the whole rocket ship. And yeah, it's the 90s. He's not doing that anymore. No. Now it's just the teeny tiny Al TV gong that he runs in and kicks and then just starts <laughs> dancing <laughs> as the song plays. It's. Perfect. It was surprising then, to see a different intro there. I, I thought the same thing, especially well now in hindsight because I hadn't thought of it at the time. Like so much of this is recycled, but there's the the bits of new footage are are 
truly new. Gotta truly new. That. And then, of course, if Al's taking over MTV, why would the first video that he play not be UHF? It <laughs> just makes sense for that to be the song that you kick it off with. But then we get the thing that we've probably been missing out the most with all the other ways that we've watched the Al TV when we get the REM Losing My Religion yeah. video where he is just commentating over uh-huh. the video. He's making sound effects. The squeaking noises every <laughs> time so Michael funny. Stape dances. That was so funny. <laughs> <laughs> Again, it's worth, people should watch these because he is just, I, I still cannot believe that he got permission to do this. He, he, he is just yelling over the song. It's wild. Like when he just screams, consider this. Consider this. I lost my shit. I yeah. lost one. It was so funny. He is yelling over losing my religion the whole song <laughs> and doing like commentary kind of over the top. There's more of these coming up. Oh, and, yeah. and it's an amazing thing to watch live because when you're watching the two hour break, you really it makes you appreciate how subversive I'm going to use that word again. You honestly cannot tell sometimes whether or not a music video is going to be an Al spoof yep. or it's the real thing. You can't tell if a commercial is real or an Al spoof like the way it just <laughs> right. plays is so yeah. hard to track where you, you are in the show. It's really an incredible feat. You we're honestly, so deep in the parody hole. It's yeah, starts eating yeah. its own tail. Exactly. Like that, exactly. There's a Van Halen. Uh, uh, oh video my god! Up we, later. There's so I much to sure. talk. I, I, the number yeah. of music videos I had to cross check. <laughs> Like this yep. took me uh, honestly, guys. This took me like the longest prep time for any episode <laughs> I've ever had because this is two straight hours of footage, and then I had to yep. go and check and be like, wait a minute, I don't think that was in the Van Halen video, <laughs> but yeah, I haven't seen no. a Van Halen video in forever, so I had to like check my like, did Van Halen add a dig to David Lee Roth into their own <laughs> yeah. music video? Yeah, the answer is no. The- but for a minute, I honestly thought they might yeah. have. The- um, can I make a quick point about UHF before we move on? Oh, yeah. sure, absolutely. In in a row, we got Victoria Jackson, Michael Richards. That was shocking. That little just <laughs> five-second run there really, really kind of whacked me in the face. <laughs> it, in hindsight, I mean, UHF is even more... It only gets wilder as the years pass, and you look back on what it was. Yeah. It's just so hard to believe that, you know, a uh, a true how-did-this-get-made scenario you know absolutely i well so here's the thing the only way truly the only way to tell what is going to be a legitimate video and what is going to be like al doing a parody of a video is how likely is it that mtv would be playing this video in 1992 you know what i mean so like when madness house of fun played i was like this is 100% 100% Al pulling out a song that he loves yeah. and just throwing it into the and broadcast. I love Same the thing fact with like, They Might Be Giants. They Might like, Be yeah, Giants, might be the giants. B-52s, which actually the B-52s arguably are the one of the only ones in the middle there where they actually do yeah. have like a legit hit, but we know yep. Al loves the B-52s. Yeah, no, some of the picks are clearly just Al's taste, which is also wonderful to see. <laughs> just yeah, what like Al Ricky was Ricardo. putting out there. He yeah. just plays a music video from Ricky Ricardo, like an I Love Lucy dance Guys, track. That was so, God, that was the <laughs> weirdest part of this oh. two hours <laughs> okay wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute because this is the most important thing we're gonna have to talk about <laughs> and we're just gonna get right into it we've we're, we're yeah. jumping ahead slightly but it's okay mm-hmm. so there is a music video that plays in the middle of this that is credited to ricky ricardo yeah. and the song is called babaloo music yeah who, who is a fictional character by the ricky way ricky ricardo <laughs> is not <laughs> a real guy <laughs> it's <laughs> <Ricky Arnest>. Ricardo. <laughs> but but guys I, I I did some research on this. That is yeah, this is a real song. It's a real song that Al made. Oh, oh God! That no. is the, uh, Weird Al did a remix. We're, oh. Weird Al is a producer of a record that is called <laughs> Babalu Music that came out in the '90s. That Al produced. The entire point was to take the music of I Love Lucy and try to introduce it into a new generation. But that first song wow. is a straight Weird Al remix. Containing no sound idea. bites and musical elements from I Love Lucy. Guys, I, had no idea. I was flabbergasted to find <laughs> this. It is the, if you look on Al's credits, it is yeah. the second credited production he has after uh, Peter and the Wolf. Wow. And there was wow. real, there's real time spent on this too. The oh my animation, God. Yes. the recoloring. It was, yeah, there was time spent on this, but I, I, I had to watch it twice. It was, I watched it. At least four thing. times. I, I could not believe it. There is a full CD of music and Al produced all of it. Now, it seems like a lot of it is just truly lifted from the show. Um, mm-hmm. But that 
it, it's on CD. That CD is nowhere to be found. I have to look on the secondhand market. I I need to find wow. this. This is this is important. This is like I, I this is a true lost Al thing that I did not know existed. I don't know if anyone listening to this is screaming at their car radio right now, going like, "You idiot! You didn't know about Babalu music." But I had no clue. This is an actual had, Al thing. This we're gonna have to like talk about it more later. I think I don't. Is this count as an actual yeah. Al track? It might. I had no idea it existed. I, I thought floored. I knew a lot about Weird Al. Totally had, floored. The first time I'd ever heard that. I knew about Babalu, right? Yeah, kind of. Everyone knows about Babalu. I was. This was. This was something else. I would like to see an update on it. You know, I, uh, yeah, I mean, it came at a time where you can also appreciate in the video they do the thing where like some of the footage is in black and white and some of it is in color, which mm-hmm. was at the time they were restoring the old episodes and and colorizing them. So I think that this went hand in hand with that. Um, nice. You can just see. And it's amazing because Al's credit, even on the CD, I found a picture of the CD and on the back, it just says produced by Al Yankovic. It doesn't even wow. say weird Al. Wow. It says produced well, by you, Al Yankovic. You can't be weird when you're producing. You can't you be weird be when you're producing Al. for uh, a fictional TV character. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a real human being The at 90s all. loved that. Like the, the Simpsons had a couple albums the in Simpsons the early 90s. The Simpsons put out 90s. records too. So, yeah, yeah. Was... so Babalu Music, I Love Lucy's Greatest Hits. A used copy is on Amazon right now for $17. That's, that's $17. worth it. I mean, I, 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 I watched this yesterday. I did some research. I found that one track on YouTube. And again, you can find it as a music video. If you search for Ricky Ricardo, Babalu Music, you'll find this video. Um, and everyone needs to watch that right away. But I really think we might need to find this album and, and do a deep dive on it. But no, this is shocking. I'm like sitting here and I'm like, I could theoretically write this off this is for the podcast <laughs> right here yeah, live on the air because it says there's only one left i'm going for it i'm buying it do it yeah as your accountant <laughs> I, I i mean it, i approve <laughs> yeah this is this is critical yeah, yeah yeah there you go yeah this is a valid write-off anyone from the irs listening can agree yeah yeah i you know what i did appreciate about the beginning of this episode getting off of babaloo for a second yes is that his first run of jokes were potato puns <laughs> And his first song was Taco Grande. Just sticking with theme. So, right, there, yes. right out of the bat, he knows what he does, and he does it well. <laughs> so right away, the start of it is him talking about how the Seattle music scene has died, and that the new <laughs> hot scene for music is Boise. <laughs> and he proceeds to make five really bad potato puns in a row. They got worse. I, they got worse they got as they worse. went. I actually didn't even write them down, because I was just like, nope. sure, this is Al just doing yep. bad potato the puns. The only one I wrote down was This Spuds For You. That was <laughs> yeah, the first got, one yeah. that jumped out at me. Yep. And then, um, yeah, and he, then we get the music video for uh, the best we're going to get is an example of a music video for Taco Grande, which I think uh, we talked yeah. about briefly in that episode. Well, so that the much music thing that we got, he kept talking about how he was going to premiere the newest music video from Gerardo. And then all we got, because the people who are putting on YouTube are so afraid of copyright infringement. Yeah. That it literally was just like, and here's the new video, and then it just cut to the last 10 seconds, and we heard him oh. say Taco Grande, and we were like, wait, <laughs> does yeah. there exist a video where Al just put his song over top of the original video and called mm-hmm. it a day? And the answer is yes, but I do want to bring it back to the Al news real quick. He does oh, do yeah. all the potato bits. He goes to the... It, He goes to the video, which there is a funny thing in the video that we'll get to in a second, but he gets a very timely Bill Clinton joke in there where he says he tried a beer once but didn't swallow. Yeah. (laughs) Which is such a good reference at that time to the like I smoked but I didn't inhale I was going to say for (laughs) potentially younger (laughs) listeners to this podcast who maybe are not familiar when Bill Clinton was running for for office the first time Mm -hmm. he got busted for admitting that he had tried marijuana in his youth and that was his line of defense was I I tried it but I didn't inhale which created a tremendous amount of debate among people going is that even a possible a thing you can do (laughs) yeah they they would always play it they'd always play it over footage of him playing saxophone on our city I know (laughs) the saxophone playing pothead from Oklahoma or Arkansas (laughs) did you catch the credits in the bottom of the screen during the Taco Grande video that says Weird Al Yankovic Taco Grande as visualized by Gerardo that's hilarious as visualized by Gerardo without a doubt the only time Gerardo got that credit in his whole stupid (laughs) career 
<laughs> that is so funny. That's that's a Michael Scott joke. That honestly, you know? it, it really Wayne Gretzky, is Michael Scott. I, I cannot believe that that was used like in earnest, which is just as visualized by Gerardo, which is just their way of saying this is a completely different song <laughs> overlaid over the wrong music video. Um, it's really fun to watch though, because every you get those moments where occasionally Al's lyric and his line up. Yeah, yeah like and, and you just see him like seemingly singing Al's lyric to the song, and those are those are fun. I also, I'll be honest, I watch I watch a lot of dubbed anime these days. My girlfriend is very very into it, so I've been go. watching a lot. I I didn't notice, didn't anything, even register you know, it, that it was yeah, an issue. Didn't yeah. register. It just this is happening. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, then then he gets into a Def Leppard Al news break where he <laughs> talks about how. Uh, Joe Elliott lost his car keys, leading to the breakup of the band, saying that this was the last straw, <laughs> uh, which is such a dark joke. But but uh, then it cuts to an Al interview, which I don't remember what this because I watched this a couple days ago. I have in quotes, get on your knees, bitch. Yeah, <laughs> he, he says yep. to them, he says, uh, I thought you were working on it's like, what's the name of that new uh, yep. really sweet ballad? You guys oh, that's were working right. on, and then it cuts to Def Leppard, who just say, "Get on your knees, bitch!" And just like, "Oh my god!" Like, <laughs> oh, yes, god. but uh, yeah, no, that's. Uh, I think that that Def Leppard joke did appear on the Much Music one as well. It's going to be hard to track every single one of these and whether or not we've seen it before. There's, I felt like that was vaguely familiar to me, but there there was a lot of them where I was like, I I'm pretty sure, like the Paula Abdul one, I know for sure was in the Much Music. Mm-hmm. Yes, um, but. So we get another Al prize. A contest for my dinner with Al. My yeah. dinner with Al, but it, it, we have to shout out certain Al-isms. The, one of the previous contests he names uh-huh. is the guess the number of molecules, molecules on my butt. Molecules in my butt. Yep. Like, <laughs> he just keeps too. coming back to this one line <laughs> in so many things. And then, of course, during the date, we know that there's one thing that Al always likes to promote. It's flossing. Al yep. is just sitting there at the table, flossing his teeth immediately after the meal. With food in his mouth. I was going to say. food in his mouth. It, it is actually one of the better. There's no way to properly describe what a great visual gag it is that Al is describing the dinner that you win with him. And he is at the table just being an absolute pig with the food. And this woman is looking horrified. And he's just dumping like liquid on her plate. And at the end, he is flossing in front of her at the table with a yep. mouthful of food and using like six feet of floss that he's just aggressively easy. like easily <laughs> like he's sawing his head off cutting down a tree <laughs> it's brutal it's brutal in, insane uh-huh. um Whoop. There was a commercial in this one for Vidal Sassoon mm. that I have to comment on. It was a okay. three and it it's it, it shows you how the times have changed. I get made fun of a lot if I use two and one. You know, my girlfriend, uh, you should separate the conditioner, shape, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. This was a Vidal Sassoon made for women. It was a three in one, one bottle, three different soaps. I thought that was that was very uh, forward of them. I don't know. It just it, it was interesting to me that they sold three in one to women back then. I didn't I, clock I that. What's the before. third if it's like shampoo, conditioner, what's the third element? I assume some sort of body wash. I don't know. Mm. It was they they said three in one in wow. it, so I don't know. It seemed like it seemed excessive to me. It's beyond our three three dudes <laughs> in this chat are not going to be able to crack this one. <laughs> what the third soap is in a Vidal Sassoon uh, 1990 special? I don't know. <laughs> Um, if we're going to briefly talk about commercials that weren't Al commercials, but were actually legitimate stuff, there is an ad to vote for the most desirable female yes. category in the MTV Jesus. Video Awards set to U2's Mysterious Ways. Yes. And I was just like, what the fuck is happening? I thought it was a bit. Like, I, did right too. I thought it was a bit. Once again. <laughs> Guys, for the MTV Awards, the category is Most Desirable Female. <laughs> My God. Can you imagine? My God. And, and what was... is... Oh, did I write it down who the uh, the candidates were? Um, uh, you had Julia Roberts, Christina Applegate. Uh, what's her name from Terminator 2? Linda uh, Hamilton. Linda Hamilton. Those are the three I remember. Oh, Kim, Kim Basinger. Yep. Oh, and Tia Carrere oh, from, from, uh, Wayne's from Wayne's World. Of course. <laughs> No, Dwayne and Garth were in 50 Hottest People. In- <laughs> <laughs> I did see. They were also promoting People Magazine, the hottest people of the year, yes. and Dwayne and Garth are both oh in there as well. God. It's definitely a very interesting time capsule to see uh, 
see those sorts of things from now. But also, if you want to vote in this category, you have to call their number, and each phone call costs 95 cents. Of course it does. <laughs> to My vote goodness. for most desirable female Good MTV Lord. listeners. Now, now I need to know who won. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> oh, let's God. see. Who do you think won that? Uh, my money's on Tia Carrere. That's I think she was given the, uh, given Wayne's World. I think that's and it, it being an MTV award, I'm inclined to yeah, agree. I feel like yeah. that's a yeah. It went to Linda Hamilton. Linda Look Hamilton. At that. Linda wow. Hamilton. Terminator Two was on quite a run here. Actually, it won wow. Best Movie. It won Best Female Performance for Linda Hamilton. It won Best the Most Desirable Female Best Performance and Most Desirable. Isn't that just <laughs> at, yeah, also, every think- young girl's dream? Which also one best do you think action she puts higher? <laughs> I was going to say, which one's higher up on the mantelpiece of Linda Hamilton's home in 2024? Another, <laughs> another couple quick notes here about this particular award show. Um, the uh, Lifetime Achievement Award was given to Jason Voorhees. Look at that. <laughs> for, Good for him. Hey, well, he went to New York and the moon. That is so. great. Yeah. He, he put the work in. And, uh, <laughs> and there was performances. There was... Wow. There was four performances. You okay. got uh, Vince Neil came out okay. and did You're Invited, but your friend can't come. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Arrested Development performed yep. Tennessee. Nice. Okay. That makes sense. That's that's cool. En Vogue performed My Lovin', wow. You're Never Gonna Get It. Dope. That's a good song. Dope. And of course, the most important of the performances, Ugly Kid Joe came out and performed <laughs> Everything About You. Wow. <laughs> What a time to be alive. I was going to say, guys, yeah. As if these desirable females weren't enough. <laughs> oh, the desi- I, just, I was Kid Joe on television. <laughs> I, was, I was curious if that was a one and done, but no, the desirable female role uh, award did continue. Oh, I'm sure it did. I'm sure it did. Wow. Brutal. I thought I maybe that. that was something where they came to their senses after the first time, but no, no oh, they, they no. kept... They kept that going. Well, well while we're on. It's a compliment. <laughs> oh, wait, Jose. One last thing, because this is fucked. Yeah. <laughs> 1994. Okay. Most desirable female. One of the nominees was Alicia Silverstone in The Crush, where she plays a 14 year old oh, girl. Yikes. Yikes. Like, oh, yikes. No. Yikes. yikes. <laughs> oh, she no. down. Big ick. Maybe that was no. the year they stopped. Maybe that was <laughs> big, the year someone yeah, said, Yeah, big Natalie Portman oh, in the professional vibe <laughs> yeah. there. Yeah, like, no, thank we you. Doing? No, thank you. <laughs> Meanwhile, in New Jersey... So, Marissa, what talking points do you want to hit on in this week's episode? Well, Jackie, let's talk about how the film addresses the patriarchy. Ooh, and representation of marginalized people. Ooh, ooh, and even philosophical ramifications of good versus evil and horror. We can point out the triangle boobs... Talk about the blood splatter and, oh, the practical effects. Um, and also the male gaze. My gaze at the males. hi From feminism to fangirling, the Jersey Ghouls cover all the bases of horror from a woman's perspective. New episodes are uploaded every other Sunday. Just search Jersey Ghouls to find us on social media and your favorite podcasting app. So we do get a replay of a video I think we've talked about like four times now on this podcast of Al performing Polka, Polka Your Eyes mm-hmm. Out on the Dr. Demento 25th anniversary special. And every time it just, so you good. have to shout out how mm-hmm. impressive this live I know. performance is. I've said is. it many times. Mm-hmm. If you haven't watched it yet, go find that. It's from the, yeah, the Dr. Demento uh, anniversary special and it's just a flawless live version of this song. It really does make you appreciate just how hard... How, how much work goes into making yeah. these sorts of things, the way they do it live with a brass band behind them. I mean, it's really, it's really good. Yep. Yeah. He um, must be exhausted after every show. Oof. It's got to oh, be so there's hard. No, there's no way he's not just like passed out by the end right. of it. Um, we get the I Can't Dance music video and they played the oh. video in full basically until the last scene where Al just comes well, out put, and does his well, tap Al dance Al put thing. himself. Al was, every time they came dancing along, there was a fourth guy. It was Al who put himself <laughs> in the video. Al green screens himself into this Genesis video. Yes. But, but like he, subtly enough that it's not yes. immediately noticeable. This is what I'm saying, guys. This, this, this is like really deep stuff. Like if you have to really be watching the show, if you're not paying enough attention, these things can go past you and you're not even going to clock that there's comedy and, involved in this. Yeah. 
how how is Phil Collins? My my God, that man is weird looking. He yeah. might be, he's so weird looking. He's the only person who looked more normal when he was made into a puppet <laughs> yes. in a music video. Like, I, I had that exact like the thought. The Phil Collins puppet. You're like that looks more like how I imagine Phil Collins. It's a super. Look. It's a really weird video. I don't think I had yep. ever seen that before, with or without Al. And I actually wrote down in my notes. I wrote down: Is Phil Collins hilarious? because i'm honestly not sure he might be hilarious i don't know yeah he makes fun of himself a lot in that video he does one of the constantly favorite segments in al tv for us is his fake tour list um and once again he shouts out the alapalooza tour uh this is still pre i mean we're getting to alapalooza on our next album but like this is still predating that album uh, there and of was course the for chair- him there, the, uh, the joke of Alapalooza is that it's yeah. all artists who are, whose name are Al. Yes. <laughs> he runs down. It's like me. Al Jolson. Al, like he's just going naming everyone yeah. he can think of who starts with. I admit I laughed. I thought that was funny. Yes. Yeah. It's great. Uh, he's going to play a charity for Billy Vanelli. He's really just taken pot shots at this poor band. <laughs> um, he's playing. He's playing the total eclipse of the sun. Yep. Set. Yes. He's playing the International House of Raw, of raw Pork. Of raw Pork. Or he was no, supposed to play it. Yeah, it got canceled. It got canceled. He's going to play the Fresno Diner. And then, of course, he has yep. his month his month at Bob's House. Yeah, <laughs> so which is sold out, by the way. He sold out 32 <laughs> shows at Bob's House. What a, what a huge step down, because usually it was a 30-day residency at Madison Square Garden, and now it's yes. just Bob's House. He's done that before, yeah. <laughs> One other commercial that kept showing up that I had to write down, I think it was the second or third time it showed up. I do not remember the existence of a PB Max bar, but this no. but yeah. this commercial where it's like the PB in PB Max does not stand for penguin something. I don't even remember yeah. what the B stands for. And it's just a penguin running up and doing karate. <laughs> yeah, that was I, I, like my early '90s pop culture trivia is pretty good, and I have no recollection. No recollection <laughs> of PB Max. The best, a candy yeah, the best bar I can think Max. of is this: it's a candy bar filled with peanut butter and jelly. Like they had, well, they had a Heath bar commercial later on, and <laughs> they, they chose the weirdest candy. No one ate Heath bars. I don't understand. The, the Heath bar commercial also made Heath bars look like they were the hippest candy. <laughs> that has never been the case. Like, whoever was like, ooh, look how cool that guy is with a Heath bar. <laughs> um, we get I couldn't in... tell you what's in a Heath bar. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I have to interrupt really quick because oh, I just looked it up. The PB Max commercials, because there's actually a Wikipedia page for it. Early television commercials declared the PB in its name didn't stand for things such as Piggy Banks, Polka Band, mm-hmm. Portly mm-hmm. Ballerina, Platinum mm-hmm. Blonde, or mm-hmm. Penguin Black Belt. That's mm-hmm. what it was. Penguin Black Belt. But wait. You're okay. telling me that one of the options was polka bands, and that's not they, the ad you decided to run Al, on the Al weird didn't Al with the polka TV? bands one. Yeah, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> that's a bad. That's. A, I don't think Al was in charge of the advertising. It was produced by Mars uh, Candies uh, and very short lived. Did not do well. Yeah. So there you go. Well, um, well there we they go. had a good advertising campaign. The, uh, yeah, they, they, they were terrible. trying. They were trying. <laughs> uh, we get a, a large chunk of this special mm-hmm. is him just replaying he he really reuses the complete al footage uh as much as he can in some of these al tvs so we get a lot of that we which have they a credit as episode. the weird al story in yeah. this yeah. which yeah. we've seen we've talked about before him like with the fans uh, batting them away selling the the merchandise talking to the people from his past you get again the wonderful talking head with his parents mm-hmm. who yeah. are great um you get the, uh, I laugh every time. Oh, we get, uh, I don't want to do my laundry. Yeah. Uh, oh, guy on every the banjo, time. which will never, I will never yep. get tired of that. Anything that he wants so to make f- with that dude is the best. <laughs> it's so funny. That guy was so funny to me. He, he gave yes. so much. We need to find him. Now, the one thing I can never remember if it's in the complete Al or not is Al giving the speech to his fans where he says... He's talking about how worthless he'd be without his fans. And he says, I'd be a kangaroo. Wait, did I say kangaroo? I meant amoeba. (laughs) I wrote this down. His order is worm, kangaroo, amoeba, paramecium. (laughs) In that order. (laughs) And then we get to what we were talking about earlier. This complete re-edit of the Van Halen right now music video. Where he is just having the time of his life changing what the things are on the screen throughout the song. Now we caught the tail end of this. He redid this on much music where it shows okay. Al and it says Al's getting bored of this video. Al's going to shut it off. Yeah, but yeah. we didn't get the full video. I did. I literally thought when we saw that, that he just played the normal video and added that to the end. But he literally has like 
basically redone almost every single so, slide in yeah, that Yeah, so so guys, so for people who don't know, the, the original version of this video, it's like a super serious like Van Halen trying to make a statement music video and every like the whole video is just these title cards that pop up on screen. It was like right now someone in America is deciding to keep their baby or what I don't, it's like really intense shit, shit heavy, heavy stuff. And Al is adding these title cards (laughs) of just nonsense, including one. And again, genuinely got me where it was like, one of them says right now, Van Halen is planning a world tour. (laughs) And the card that comes up after that is a video of David Lee Roth sitting at a desk. And it goes right now, David Lee Roth is looking for a day job. Yeah. (laughs) Cause this is the Van Hagar (laughs) era. And it, 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 it edited in so seamlessly that I sincerely thought I was like, did Van Halen throw in a jab at, at David Lee Roth? Cause I knew at I this moment they were me. not friendly at all. Like it was bad scene. Yeah. Um, but no, it was Al. <laughs> um, I, I do like, I like this particular point in music history because it it's, you can see all these hair metal bands responding to Seattle. So they all take themselves so seriously. So seriously. Yeah. For about three years here, it's great. There's a and Guns N' Roses video we, later on that's just the most serious thing in the world. Oh, yeah. And we talked about it last week when we were talking about You Don't Love Me Anymore, but some of those bands even tried to recreate the sound of Seattle <sighs> and put out, like, the Motley Crew early 90s records are some of the most unlistenable. Mm-hmm. Like, the self-titled album and Generation Swine are real tough to get through because it is a band trying to sound like the current times that has yeah. no emotional attachment to the oh movement that it's playing. And it just like seeps through every single song. It really does make um, you appreciate. It was such a mad dash because Nirvana again, like blew up the music world yep. entirely, but then Kurt died so quickly that it was just like, yeah. while people were recalibrating to this new world, then he dies. And now it's like, well, now what do we do? Well, uh-huh. that's why I've said it's this a crazy. million times. 95 and 96 is my absolute favorite time on the radio because you get so many bands signed to record contracts uh-huh. that would have never been on the radio. Bands like the Butthole Surfers getting contracts because yep. they need to find the yep. next Nirvana as quickly as possible. <laughs> and you get some of the most interesting music to ever be released to radio during it's those true. two years. It's insane to be Um, fair you also get bush so i love listen i love bush i think 16 stone is a great album i think that that band got better with each release Um, i think it's a serviceable album i i I did have it i wouldn't turn it off but you know (laughs) also gavin rossdale's just dreamy he's a dreamy human being he was a very handsome man doesn't matter what your sexuality is you can't look at that dude and not think yeah i'd fuck that i'm not gonna argue with you on that (laughs) so we finally have a term for people like us we are alaholics uh and there's this fake psa for the alaholics anonymous there is this moment i had to clock this i think all three of us will know this reference point there is a scene where al is holding what looks to be a baby and then it's this baby doll face. Yep. And I swear to God, it's the it's the zombie baby from Dead Alive. Yeah. But that doesn't yeah. make sense because Dead Alive didn't come out for a year after this aired. So I yep. don't know what is happening. That's <laughs> amazing. Like, You're right. I didn't clock what that was. <laughs> I did see it and I thought that looks really familiar and it looks <laughs> too good yeah. for what he has here. Like who, yeah. who made him this? Like it, it's really <laughs> like a gross, gross it looking. It looks Creature. There's no way it's not the baby from Dead Alive. It looks fucking identical to it. Well, at it's, this point, he'd already done a movie. You know, he'd yeah. been in industry for a while. I'm sure he knew somebody who's like, hey, check this out. Ooh, I'm going to use it. Was so, that person like, Peter Jackson? <laughs> <laughs> what, do you think Peter Jackson Did, uh, wasn't a big Weird Al fan? Think Peter I think Jackson is, is filming Al TV episode six for him. And it was like, ooh, check this out. Oh, God. I want to see Weird Al as a hobbit or oh, as, a, as an elf. <laughs> It's not too late. We can do it. We can do it. <laughs> we were talking about all the different video edits, and we'll get to the Guns N' Roses one, because that one is very funny, but my favorite one is the black or white video. Oh, where he, my God. Him, first of all, it's him intercutting the we're not going to take it speech from yes. Twisted Sister. That goes the- so hard when he's screaming <laughs> it. Honestly, in guys, in. another example of like, it, this was happening, and I was like, wait a minute. This yes. is not like because it's it's such a good mashup 
Other yep. than the fact that the dad climbing the stairs just sway- <laughs> switches into yeah. another dude. It's Norm. It's Norm from Cheers. It goes from to Norm the guy to, yeah. from um, Animal House. But yeah. like, this is yeah. one of those memory things where, in my mind, I always thought it was John Goodman as yeah. the dad. In my mind, it was that's a, always that's John believable Goodman. mistake. And then to George make, yeah. Went shows up. That's yeah, right. That, that kind of took me by surprise. But yeah, and then you, they, you know, this guy. Yeah, oh, like God. you said, the guy from Animal House. I don't know that actor's name. Just screaming at Macaulay Culkin. <laughs> And it looks. It, it went so hard. <laughs> it's so good, and then you get to the end of the video where the people are changing and saying black or white, uh, yes. and his overdub of every person's voice during that scene equally hilarious. Like it's so, so funny. So we have to address something. It's important. We've talked about how for off the deep end, we just finished talking about off the deep end a whole bunch. Oh, that's right. He wanted to do a parody want, of black Al or white. He wanted to do a no. parody of black or white. Yeah. And he was famously going to call it snack all night. Oh and God. Michael Jackson said no, because he thought that the subject matter for black or white was too serious to parody. <laughs> Guys, Al plays this video and sings the whole song himself in a chipmunk voice. He doesn't change the lyrics, but he sings all of black or white like a sped up chipmunk it is absolutely hilarious and could not be more disrespectful there's no way there's no way that that is less inappropriate than whatever snack all night would have been it's but i so can't funny believe against, it that's against that karaoke album. video computer graphic shit that's in most of the video it is so funny it's hilarious oh and, love, all yeah. the way down to like michael jackson has this stupidly high voice and then in the middle of the song there's that rap done by Macaulay Culkin and then Macaulay's <laughs> rap is two octaves lower than he should be <laughs> I mean it's so good it, it's, it's, amazing. it's amazing and I honestly cannot believe that it exists like did Al ask permission to do that I don't think he had to I don't think he has but, to on MTV but, no. but I think the, he can the fact do whatever that Michael said no <laughs> I, I, I'm blown away that this exists. Like That's I can't be the only time he ever said no. There's no. so many weird Al Yankovic, Michael Jackson. Uh, well, uh, yes. look, we're getting very, very, very close to this. But the other person who's infamously told Al no Prince. a whole lot is Prince. It's Prince. Yep. And and we're getting to Alapalooza where he straight up just is like, that's it. Prince keeps saying no. I'm not even going to ask permission anymore. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to do a parody of Let's Go Crazy, mm-hmm. and I won't list it as a parody. It's just going to be listed as a style parody. But like Traffic Jam is almost note for note the song Let's Go Crazy by Prince. It's oh, amazing. It's, it's carefully insane. constructed, yes, to be yeah. safe. Amazing. Um, so we get a live performance. I think this is the first time that we've had an actual like Al performs a song on Al TV. Oh, Very first time. He- and my he notes, does you don't love me anymore. It's amazing. My notes here, I would I would I would watch I would listen to an entire album Al Unplugged. I thought yeah, especially totally. that song was so funny in that setting and he sings it so well. Yep. I just I enjoyed that so much. And he does the guitar fake out that he does in the video. It's still funny <laughs> every time. Matt, is that Steve J playing the keys in the I, background? I think it's Steve J the bass player is yeah. is playing keyboards. I can't tell. It might be a um the the backing track might be pre-programmed. They might just be miming along back there. I don't actually know, um, but it does seem like they're they're really doing the thing. Um, yeah. yeah, no, and it, it sounds... still takes him a couple of whacks to break that guitar. At he the breaks end. the guitar like at him. the end, which is not easy for him to do. He has a hard time. And then my favorite part is after he finishes breaking the guitar, they dim the lights and you see him at the back, and he is like feeding his two band members treats, <laughs> like they're like they're dogs who just did a good job. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> literally holding it above their mouths and they reach up and grab it. It's great. I, so I think we've said this before on this show, but the Al TV stuff more than anything else really shows that Al's not just doing... Al hasn't had the same three band members his entire career just because they're good musicians and good friends. Mm-hmm. They are so down with whatever yeah. gag or joke he pitches at them. They... Like, there's no hesitation. They're just like, yep. Like, I I genuinely believe that they are as funny as Al. I think what sets them apart, and uh, like, and I'm coming as a huge fan of this. I yeah. think the anti-charisma exhibited by those three <laughs> is so <laughs> counterbalanced by his extreme charisma yeah. that you find this perfect balance. You well, know? They, I, they just play it so straight, right? Like, they yes. just play it like we are here to be musicians. And, yes. And, 
giving off the aura of like, we don't understand what's funny about this. <laughs> We're just here to play songs is the the smartest comedic move you can yeah, make yes. because well, they don't, they're not all going to have microphones. They're not all going to be telling jokes, but just being the straight men to Al is exactly the counterbalance he needs. Yep. It's, it's, it's very much, I mean, they're predating this already by 10 years, but at this time right now, me and Matt Kelly world, um, my girlfriend has never seen The State. So we've been mm. watching oh. all the episodes of The State. So fun. Yeah. And I think it's in that same vein of like half of the stuff that works with The State is them buying the most absurd premise is just normal. Yep. Like, like one of the lines was one of the early sketches, if you remember, is the one where the son brings home a mud wrestler. <laughs> and oh, yeah. she's like, He's like, so what exactly is mud wrestling? And she's like, well, first of all, we need a pit of mud. Do you have a pit of mud? He's like, well, we have a small one under the table. Will that work? And they, just like, <laughs> and they flip over the table. And he's like, I didn't even know this was a thing you could do in here. I just played in it. <laughs> like It's like so outrageous. And that's how all of Al's bandmates are, is just whatever the most absurd premise yeah. is, they just yes end into it. They're it's like, good. yep, nope, that that's totally what it is. Yep. I do like that. Al does a House of Style parody, which like... Mm -hmm. There is this period in the early 90s where MTV is trying to find stuff to break up between the music videos and they are creating these obnoxious shows like House of Style or like the MTV Extreme Sports stuff. Like yep. it is like aggressively frustrating. I misheard what he said in the beginning and I thought he said it was clothing made entirely of poop. <laughs> and it took until like 45 seconds into this bit where I'm like, oh, fruit. They're wearing fruit. To be fair, the designer's name is Reginald Butt Plug. Reginald yeah, Butt well, Plug. <laughs> that didn't help me not think that yep. he said the word poop. <laughs> I won't lie. <laughs> Again, um, a funny little surprising line where he was like, let's go to <laughs> Reginald Buttplug. And I was like, <laughs> just did not expect Al to say that. Like, not no. at all. Like, that really no. got me. Then we get to, we've already hinted at it. We get the Guns N' Roses Don't Cry video. Uh -huh. And his his thing where he comes on, the, the line that killed me was when he comes onto the megaphone when they're playing on the roof. And he goes, this is the music video police. Stop ripping off Let It Be. <laughs> 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 I loved his over his talking over the the big fight at the beginning. No, you always get to play with the gun. Give it. <laughs> uh -huh, I got it. <laughs> oh my god! And you're right. This is like again, Guns and Roses, just taking themselves so seriously uh, with this video. And like, Don't Cry is a great song. It yeah. is a great Guns N' Roses song, but this video is so over the top. And then the confusing closing shot of the baby coming out of the water and zooming into its eye. And there are two versions of this video. Of course they, there are. They <laughs> released a sequel video to the same song like That's... a couple months later. <laughs> God. I would. I This was the only one I thought to myself. I'm not a huge Guns N' Roses fan, generally speaking. And I thought like if it wasn't for Al's narration, I would have skipped this. <laughs> Because <laughs> it goes on and on and on, and yeah, it it's is like so long, painfully, so long. painfully self-important. Yes. Oh, the the entirety of that, like, there's a reason why it took 20 years for the next Guns N' Roses album. Because the Use Your Illusion one and two album, like, when people talk about how you don't need double albums, like, this is the prime example. These are like two albums. I think it's 23 songs total. And I think yep. the besides like the rap that Axl Rose put at oh. the end of one of the songs, I think the next shortest song is like six and a half minutes. Like it There's... is so over bloated. It is so long. It's so it's, obnoxious. Yeah. It's, it's walk hard styles of parody right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Oh God. Um, and then what? the, the other, I always talk about this cause it's a, a fun music fact. They obviously announced that the next album that they were going to do was Chinese Democracy. Yep. It took forever for it to come out. And at one point... <laughs> I know what you're going to say, and I love this story. Yeah, at one point, The Offspring was going to release yep. an album yep. called Chinese Democracy, You Snooze, You Lose, and Axl Rose sued them to not release the album. <laughs> so that is um, so funny. It's oh. so good. Uh, but we we get into probably my favorite bit that... I've seen him do in a long time, which is when he's just going over some of the albums that he's purchased in the last month this and he's was, putting them. Yeah. 
And the first one is the new Vanilla Ice track, uh-huh. and it's just the song Stairway to Heaven. And uh-huh. then at the end of the first verse, he just goes, yeah, boy. <laughs> like, that was awesome. so funny to me. It, I feel like he predicted the next 30 years of music right there. <laughs> <laughs> then then it's the Bobby McFerrin All Fart oh Noises album, God. which is oh so, God, funny. That's so funny. It sounds and like the- he might have actually gotten the guy who does all the hand farts on yes. Al's records, oh. it's really what it sounds like. The uh, the manualist, I think, they is the the proper name for the hand farts man. Hand farts man. I know, right? <laughs> he goes and here's the new Warrant album with their new single. She's a glazed donut. I'm a Polish sausage. Get it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, which I feel bad for Warrant because man, they did not want to be known as the Cherry Pie Band. That was what? like a thing thrust upon them. What you get? The record do? label is like, we need another hit. <laughs> What are you going to do? I mean, did they bought them all houses. I don't feel yeah, that bad for yeah. them. <laughs> I'll never forget the behind the music on Warrant and the lead singer Warrant is talking about. He goes, you know, when I wrote that song, he's so di- like when you talk about artists who hate their biggest hit, I yep. don't think anyone hated their biggest hit more than Warrant. He's like, you know, back in 1990, when I wrote that song, if I knew that for the next 30 years, I'd be judging pie eating contests for the rest of my life, I maybe wouldn't have put the song. Like, he is- I, think, he I, I think he straight up says, I could shoot myself for writing that fucking song. <laughs> like, he's the way so- he speaks, he sounds like a Tolkien like scholar when he speaks. You know? I know. <laughs> this is what he's known for. <laughs> this We get a great violent moment from Al where he's watching a David Bryan video and Burn. he wants to see. Bert, oh my God. Yep. <laughs> a David Byrne video, and he wants to keep replaying the scene where a hammer smashes his head, and he decides to do it to himself. And it's a pretty well done because it's a single take. Yeah. He hits himself with the hammer, and then just the blood slowly just starts to come down his face. It, it's it's actually like kind of harrowing. Like he yeah. does, because it was funny because he does, again, a classic bit that he has done before on yeah. LTV where he is like, oh, I love that bit. Show it again. And they show again David Byrne hitting himself with a hammer, but then it's like a cartoon effect where his head shrinks and then gets big again. It's very like um, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and Al makes him do it a couple times, and I thought the joke was going to end the way it usually does, which is where he asks again. He's like, can we watch it one more time? Oh, sorry. They're telling me we got to move on. (laughs) Like the producer yelling at him from the back that he's shown the same clip six times. But in this case, instead of doing that, Yeah, he takes a hammer and just straight up like hits himself like between the eyes, looks like as hard as possible. He has a moment of like scared confusion on his face. Mm -hmm. And then he says, see the concussion. Yes. And then he says, um, let this be a lesson. Never hit yourself in the head as hard as you can with a hammer. (laughs) And as he's saying this, the blood is slowly trickling down to his nose. Like it's like. If if he was just look like it's almost out of a movie, it looks really good. Slash, it reminded me upsetting. of Fifth Element when Gary Oldman. Oh was yeah, sitting there in the blood. That that I got strong vibes from that. Yes. Um. All right. So we have to talk about my favorite thing that I deep dived into, which is bad news. W- bad news. Yes. <laughs> when Al's when Al's about to play Queen Bohemian Rhapsody, he goes, you know, because of Wayne's World, we play this new version of the video. And I feel like people have forgotten the original, so I want to play the original. I did so much research on this fake English heavy metal band called Bad News and this impossibly awful cover that they've done <laughs> of Bohemian Rhapsody. It the- is insane <laughs> it's so funny that there's 30 seconds in the middle of this video where they just fight each other in yes. their <laughs> dressing room it's so funny <laughs> little jokes you have to watch out for like no 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 i don't think so <laughs> <laughs> it's it's incredible and yes it, they were they were a sketch group as part of the uk uh channel 4 tv series the comic strip presents uh, where they formed this fake heavy metal band basically right around the exact same time as Spinal Tap. Like, Bad News and Spinal Tap Wild. both started around the same it, time. It was they crazy. They started in 83. Because so. honestly, when this first started, that was the first thing I thought of, of course. I was like, this is like Spinal Tap. Who is doing yeah. this? Yep. And it was a British version. Two of the guys in the band are uh, Adrian Edmondson and Rick Mayall, who went on for UK comedy fans. I I have more knowledge of UK comedy than I have any right to because my wife is British and I've spent a lot of time over there with the band. But they were in the very popular uh, TV show, The Young Ones, 
huh. um, which has become like a big sort of like early like 90s UK comedy thing. And then Rick Mayall, um, he's, he's an dropped actor. Dead Fred. Drop Dead Fred. Yeah, he was the yeah. lead of, he <laughs> oh, played Fred in Drop Dead Fred, which depending on who you ask, is either the best or worst performance of all time. The first two thirds of that movie are amazing. <laughs> I'm, honestly, a, I'm a big apologist. I love Drop Dead Fred. I think that movie is is honestly great. I that came out on Blu-ray recently, so I grabbed it to rewatch it because I loved it yeah. as a kid. That movie tackles some really deep shit about Dude, like child abuse and really stuff is. in the last yeah. act. And I was it, like, oh my God. It felt like a black box performance. You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, what it really watching? takes a turn at the end. Um, yes. It's one of those but great I, movies, a kid's movie from that time period where it's like, you can appreciate it as a wacky, zany kid's movie. And only when you're mm -hmm. older are you like, oh my God, this is hitting on stuff that I, I didn't realize how deep this was as a kid. Yeah. 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 But we do get Harvey right towards the end. Harvey, the Wonder Hamster shows up and Al says he's nervous because Ozzy Osbourne is uh -huh. here. Right. Get a get a classic Ozzy Osbourne biting the heads off animals thing. We get the replay of the Ozzy interview, which still makes me laugh every single time. <laughs> Specifically, the <laughs> Ozzy, Ozzy, did you cut one? And he goes, mm. don't blame me. And he goes, well, there's two of us here, so it had to be you. And he goes, it may be, it may be not. <laughs> and my other favorite, I know I quoted this exact line last time, but Ozzy, Al just asks Ozzy, like, How's, how are you doing? How's your family? And Ozzy just goes, my kid went to see a movie and got run oh, over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I just, I don't I, understand what the original context of that line was, but God, I love it so much. <laughs> The only oh. thing I've written down about that segment is an Ozzy Osbourne I can understand. Incredible <laughs> explanation <laughs> point. <laughs> so good. And then we get a fake ad for the uh, fax oh. sex hotline, which oh. is Why kind of blue for it? Al, but damn. Surprisingly, <laughs> yeah, it's it, he's promoting a, a service for it. It's like, do you want to call a phone? Um, I wish I wrote down all the dialogues. It's really funny. It's like, do you want to call a phone sex hotline, but not want to talk to some angry person who's was, mean to you? <laughs> Why talk directly to a bunch of dirty, underpaid women? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> I love oh. the faxes. He sends it. What are you wearing? And then he waits and he waits and he waits <laughs> and he gets one back. Nothing. It just says nothing. <laughs> Al basically invented like very slow sexting uh, with with his uh, fax sex Holy program. Shit. Oh my god! It's uh, it's so 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 good. It's it was so wonderful. insanely funny. And then of course, what other song would he end Al TV with? but smells like Nirvana. Yep. And then we just get a weird couple seconds of an MTV news special bulletin about super fans that I got about a minute into. and was like, I don't need to watch. Yeah. This. Yeah. I was done. I was done. When the girl's <laughs> crying over that dude. Um, no, thank you. I, I, I forget the name, but uh, yeah, no, thanks. But uh, yeah, Al TV number six, hopefully we can find the rest of these Al TVs on the archive because boy do we get a much bigger picture of what this like yeah. block of television truly was yeah we're gonna we're gonna definitely keep trying to find because th this was really satisfying i hope we can find more of this if any of you listening have any leads on this type of al tv i definitely want to i i'd rather sit through the commercials honestly because yeah. it, it makes the whole experience so much it does so much more yeah. genuine yeah. um just to shout out because we kind of mentioned a couple of them but i really enjoyed the the uh, song selections that I assume were Al specific, the non spoofed yeah. music videos that he picked for this. Um, the first one that well, losing my religion, but he does talk over that. But yep. then um, they might be giants. A song called "The, the Statue, Statue Got, Got Me, Me High. High," yep, yeah. which is a great track. And for if you're an Al fan who is not familiar with "They Might Be Giants," yeah, we're, we're getting up, we're approaching. Uh, his actual style parody of them, but the statue got me high is a great example of like I don't I think you'll find a lot to like in that song. It's yeah. accordion always, heavy, super catchy. I've always thought they might be giants was the other side of the nerd coin. Yeah. Like if Al yeah. went straight, he would be. If Al went they straight, might be giants. I think you're absolutely right. Yeah. No, I and so I was one of the. I think there was a generation of kids like me who discovered they might be giants because of Tiny Toons. Tiny Toons. Tiny Toons. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They did the like Flood a, album. Yeah, they did a series of music videos of, yeah. of it was Particle Man and Istanbul. In Istanbul, and I, was like, yep. Yep. I was like, this is incredible. And Those are still I mean, like two of their biggest songs because of that, because of how many because people of got introduced. Yeah, I can probably still sing uh, Particle Man word for word <laughs> because it's of definitely, that. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> 
Um, so wait, I was, oh yeah, so They Might Be Giants, uh, Statue Got Me High, uh, we get Love Shack by the B-52s, yep. which yep. we know Al loves the B-52s, that would have been a big song at the time. Um, um, by the way, <laughs> has, uh, has Fred Schneider always been 50? Yes. He's just 50, right? Just uh, all the time? I hope so. <laughs> I hope he stays 50 for the rest of humanity, because we need yeah. him. We need him. We do need him. We need uh, Yeah, that that's going to be, I, you know, I have like a mental list in my head of like, who are going to be... The people that when I wake up one morning and see a bunch of people have posted a picture of a celebrity, know, right? th- will my heart shatter? Yeah, and that is I like, think yeah, Fred Schneider is going to be one of those ones that I don't think about, but then when it happens, I'm going to just be like, oh no, yep. Like, yep, yeah, yeah, just be a little bit sadder, yeah, yeah, totally, madness, uh, yeah, we House get of House of Fun by Madness, we get the music video for Free Fallen by Tom Petty. Yep. Which is another g- glorious '90s video with complete with skateboarding. Tom Petty videos are super underrated. I yeah, think. I thought I loved for it. sure he would be doing something with this song, and I kept clicking around, nope. and I'm like, nope, this is just He's straight just up play. There's enough weird surrealism in Tom Petty videos that I think it kind of it's a it's a bit of a genre match for weird yeah, out in a weird there's at way. Least, Absolutely, there's at least two Tom Petty music videos that I distinctly remember terrifying me, and it was the "Don't Come Around Here No More" Alice in Wonderland course. video and the Mary Jane's Last Dance Last video Dance. is yep. very unsettling to watch. It's a gothic horror. Yeah. I mean, Kim Basinger <laughs> dies, <laughs> but yeah. then she opens her eyes underwater at the very end. Exactly, it's <laughs> like terrifying. it's great. And then they oh, eat man. the dress and the Alice in Wonderland. Yeah, like, yeah it's terrifying video yeah tom petty i love his videos <laughs> uh, yeah it, it, th- that tom petty video i would have forgotten because it feels so not appropriate now like the second like final minute or two of that video are literally just kids skateboarding on a half pipe <laughs> yeah it's, it's so 90s at the time like it was just so in skateboarding like oh that's gonna make tom petty seem young and hip <laughs> Put all these skateboarders in there it is a great video though i love it um and it's then i think good. the only other one i have is the david byrne she's mad yeah yeah. Which again is not spoofed. It's just played a later. To be honest, I did not know that song at all, and it was not bad. No, yeah. no, it felt like a deep cut. It Fe- felt like something that Al would have in his own private record collection. And he threw on for it, this. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Again, uh, just examples of artists Al has referenced in his work before. Clearly, yep. he's a big fan. Yeah, and then I mean, other than that, there's like they play the uh, Money for Nothing video in here. It ends with Smells Like Nirvana. Al gets a couple of his own um, yeah. videos. You to gotta the squeeze them in there. For exactly. Sure, but- yeah. 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 I'm uh, wondering if anything in that Money for Nothing video would hit with today's audience. Like Dire I mean, Straits, we, nobody knows about him. Beverly Hillbillies, nobody knows about them, right? The computer graphics are all... I, I feel like everything has aged in that it, song. It's definitely one of our... Lo- it, I think it's, if not our lowest rated, very close to the bottom on our Al music video rankings. Because it's ah, like, gotcha. this is not... It doesn't even really have jokes in no. it. It's just like, hey, we redid the Dire Straits video. Almost shot for shot. Yeah. But here's some Beverly Hillbillies. If anything, the best it. thing about it now is to watch that animation at the beginning and be like, can you can you believe that that was the best we could do? <laughs> that was there like, is, can you believe we made this? Look yeah, at how he moves. One good bit in that video that I caught uh, when Dire Straits, he's Mark Knopfler is looking at this camera and then he looks at this camera and you see Weird Al. He looks at this camera and then this camera, and then this camera, and then the camera behind him, and then a camera above him, and he's trying to find the camera the whole time. That was funny. That's good. That that's is good. That's pretty good. Um, but all right. I have, to, I have to give one oh. other quick shout out just for a commercial, sure. because uh, for anyone I know who uh, is familiar with Long Island, which is where I grew up, Long Island, New York, um, there is a commercial in the middle of this episode, in the middle of this block, I'm assuming whoever recorded this must have lived on Long Island because there's a lot of local ads for like car lots and stuff. There is a commercial for a place called the Courtesy Hotel. Oh, that could not be more obviously a sex hotel. Yeah, (laughs) with with wall to wall mirrors, afternoon day rates, wall to wall (laughs) mirrors, and just these like slow zoom in shots of this man and woman awkwardly holding each other like this. (laughs) <laughs> that whole block was funny because you have courtesy hotel where we all got scabies and then the very next commercial is for vaginal cream for yeast infections yes. it was just an incredible two it was for great. right there in the it middle was, yes 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 but the, the courtesy hotel in hempstead uh very close to where i grew up and i just that that ad took my breath away i couldn't believe that that just ran 
<laughs> midday on MTV. Oh, it was so, so, so good. You, speaking of that Long Island, something that I noticed in there, because I used to live in Queens, mm. was uh, PC Richardson and Son have not changed their jingle in over 30 years. Nope. It's that same whistle. It's been the same. PC it will Richard, always be the same. It's, it, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> you know, that's that's how they do it. Yeah, no, I mean, again, I could even just talk about the commercials forever. I loved like commercials promoting pay-per-view. There was a, oh, there was yeah. a whole pay-per-view commercial saying like this month on pay-per-view, you can finally rent like the new Rutger Hauer movie. <laughs> yeah. At last. <laughs> at last. We can f- watch it from the comfort of your own home. Oh, thank God. Um, um, and uh, co- blockbuster video commercials and stuff. Oh, it's just uh-huh. so wonderful to see it all. It was so good. Yeah. So Tower good. Records. Tower selling Records. Selling a space camp contest. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. Well, that was LTV episode six. We've got like four more of these plus two more much music. So there's plenty more Al sketch comedy for mm-hmm. us. But Nate, thank yes, you for sir. joining us. We will absolutely have you back on for please, like a please, genuine please. episode. But in the meantime, do you want to plug anything that you're up to? Like, I don't know, a podcast where you live <laughs> in a magical apartment. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so my, uh, my, my roommate, uh, Bacon, and I, we do 91 Donkey Lane. We've been doing it for a few years. We really enjoy it. Uh, it's funny. We, uh, we're on season two now, and we've just gotten back to the house. So we are we're back in ninety one Donkey Lane. <laughs> the adventures are starting up again. We are we're looking forward. It should be a funny uh, should be a fun season. I, I, I love that podcast. So good, like highly recommended it, to listeners of our show. It's so fun. It's so fun. It's genuinely my favorite podcast yes. to listen to. Anytime a new episode comes out, I literally drop what I'm doing and find time to listen to it. So we'll be back next week with even more Weird Al. Uh, back catalog stuff I guess. yeah I guess so you're listening to the Geekscape Network 